In the 1850s, New York witnessed the worst scandal in history related to farmers. Tens of thousands of people suffered with 8,000 infants dead in just one year. All because farmers decided to save on cow feed. They sold the contaminated milk of sick animals, adulterating it with water, sugar, plaster, and even rotten eggs. This resulted in mass poisoning and a soaring number of casualties, a true farmer's nightmare. But those were bad farmers. These people knew what they were getting into and did it anyway. But some things are simply impossible to control. Farms are not the safest place in the world. Today you'll learn why do people have to sniff cow feces, why is it against the law to complain about the smell coming from the farms, how can a cow's belching cost someone's life, why are farmers banned from burying dead animals, and why are there cows with holes in their sides on farms? Don't smoke at gas stations. Don't light a fire near gas cylinders. But no one ever told us that just one match lit in a barn is enough to blow the whole place up. You probably thought I set it all up on purpose. I don't have a cow, unfortunately, but I'll show you real footage oh. now. What you see in the video now looks more like some editing. A man brings a lighter right up to a cow's side and sets something on fire. Something's burning at the very side of the cow. Some kind of gas, while the animal doesn't seem to care at all. The rest of the cows nearby also don't seem interested, as if this is a typical day at the barn. Meanwhile, the burning cow seems to get smaller with each second. Or am I seeing things? As if this guy is slowly burning the gas that filled the cow. Is that even possible? And if the cow does contain some kind of combustible compound, how come the fire doesn't go inside and the animal doesn't explode? Perhaps for the same reason fire doesn't act this way in lighters, gas bottles, or some wells. To understand how explosive cows really are, we decided to do a little research. After all, if these animals can start burning so easily, this should have had serious consequences at least once. And I found something. In 2014, an explosion happened in the German town of Rosdorf, in the cow shed. The explosion damaged the roof and hurt one of the cows. When the police started an investigation, they discovered a strange thing. Seems like the cows were to blame for the explosion. The belching and flatulence of 90 cows generated too much methane in the shed, and then just one static charge was enough to cause the explosion of the gas. But here we have a logical question. How much gas can cows produce? Well, a cow can't generate a huge amount of explosive gas in a day, can it? Oh, you bet it can. It's believed that each cow produces up to 132 gallons of methane daily. And if it results in an explosion, this of course means financial losses. Well, poor cows suffer too. In any case, farmers need to prevent such situations, and it's better to do this before the shed becomes a huge bomb or the animals will suffer. The gas inflates them to dangerous sizes. Of course, you can release the gas excess manually for each cow, or you can make sure they produce as little methane as possible. To do this, you first need to understand how cows generate methane. I believe you know cows are ruminants, and most ruminants have a stomach with four chambers. We're mainly interested in the rumen, the first and largest chamber. The food swallowed by animals will first get into the entrance of the rumen, then into the rumen itself, and after a while, it gets back to the mouth to be chewed again. This cycle repeats several times. There are about 23 different types of fungi in the rumen, usually mold and yeast, which help digest cellulose. The process produces volatile fatty acids and gases, including methane. Acids are absorbed through the rumen walls and transported to the liver to be used by the body. But the cow simply doesn't need gases, so it tries to get rid of them exactly like that through belching and flatulence and the result is the same a large amount of release methane you're lucky if it happens somewhere outside or in the car with an open window because otherwise a cow belching or manure can kill you i'm not exaggerating now 
Five people died at once on a dairy farm in Virginia. The first guy went down into a manure pit to fix the blockage and got killed by methane right away. The second worker climbed into the death trap to save the first guy and also died. After that, three more people fell into the pit, including two kids. They all succumbed to methane, which accumulated in an enclosed space. The very first and probably the most logical question that comes to mind is, didn't the poor guys feel the smell of the gas? After all, methane is a gas often used at home, and it's simply impossible not to notice a methane leak. But the thing is, the farmers didn't have a chance. Not only because manure already smells so strong it can overshadow all other smells, natural methane is odorless. What we smell when we light the burner are just impurities called odorants. They're added to the gas so that a leak can be detected. Otherwise, half of humanity would be wiped out by gas poisoning, or even more. Well, pure methane has no smell, no color, or taste. By the way, if your country uses a mixture of propane and butane as household gas, they also have no smell. What you feel is just a fragrance. So yes, cows do generate methane, and it can actually kill both the animal itself and a human if the concentration is too high. This is not some kind of accident, but a very sad reality. I decided to find out how common such cases are and called my grandparents who live in the countryside. And to my surprise, a similar situation happened more recently. About a couple of years ago, at a local farm, a shepherd was taking the cows to pasture and at some point he fell asleep. Left unsupervised, the animals left the pasture and ate some legumes. As a result, six cows out of 20 swelled up so much they had to be killed. People simply didn't know what to do in such a situation, although they could carefully release the gas. Do you realize how few people know about this? Of course, this stupid situation can be explained by the fact that these people lived in the village and simply didn't have access to the necessary information. Perhaps even about 100 or 150 years ago, people had no idea what to do with cow gases at all. It was impossible to just look inside the animal and examining each swollen cow with recently discovered x-rays. You know, that's a rather strange idea for the beginning of the century. Only in 1928, there was the first case of installing a cannula in the side of a cow. This is something like a porthole through which people got access straight to the rumen. What for? Well, to do research, monitor the digestion of healthy animals, and treat sick ones. And yes, people literally stick their hands inside the cow. And when I say they make holes in cows, this is not some kind of metaphor. First the animal is shaved, then they have to apply a soapy solution and an antiseptic several times to make sure the skin is as clean as it can be, again and again. After all, this is a cow, not the most sterile animal, and only then the doctor makes several lidocaine injections in different spots, completely anesthetizing the desired area. The cow, of course, is not happy about that, but what can you do? Then they add a little more soapy solution and antiseptic. Is that a compass? All right, that makes sense. With its help, the doctor marks the precise spot of the future incision. Unfortunately, YouTube guidelines prevent me from showing what the surgery looks like, so check out the result. They really put a porthole into the cow. But a cow can't just be pierced anywhere, even if it's swollen due to excess methane. Why? I'll try to explain using a balloon. Let's say you pierce it at a random spot, like here, and the balloon will simply pop. Of course, a cow isn't like that, hopefully, but follow my logic. If you pierce the balloon at its base and carefully pull out the needle, it'll remain intact. It works about the same way with a cow. You need to be as careful as you can. According to experienced farmers, the hole for the release of methane should be made past the last rib on the left side, about four inches below the edge of the loin. And yes, at first glance, it may seem like a cruel thing to do. Someone will probably say it's painful for the animal. But hey, I showed you they used anesthetic. Also, don't forget the explosions I mentioned. So in this case, making holes looks like the right and humane way. Well, I agree with you on one thing. Cows, like many other creatures, can feel pain. But the question is, how do you determine whether a cow is in pain at any particular moment? It won't tell you how it feels, or will it? You just need to know where and what to look at. If the cow doesn't care if you touch it at the spot about to be cut open, it's curious. 
has no appetite changes, then it's fine. If it shakes its head frequently, moves in a weird way, loses appetite, and tries to avoid being touched, these are clear signs of pain. Well, when an animal is in severe pain, it often breathes through an open mouth, refuses to eat, and may even grind its teeth. You have to admit, these signs are quite difficult to miss. But let's get back to that story with the explosion on the German farm. When it happened, many well-known news agencies, including Time, BuzzFeed, BBC, and Salon, blamed cow flatulence for it. Quoting the local police sources, of course, and they were right to some degree, cows do produce methane, and methane does ignite. However, for mere flatulence to result in such a strong concentration of gas, that's unlikely. The second report, published by the Hunfelder Zeitung, says that the more likely suspect for the methane release is fertilizer. Farmers make it from cow manure, and this mixture releases a lot of gas indeed. Also, it makes it easier to concentrate it in one spot. Also, you see similarities with the story of the poor farmers who fell into the manure pit? But besides cows, the farmers also keep pigs. And this is where the real methane hell begins. Underneath some industrial pig farms, there are pits for collecting most of the animal waste. And sometimes on the surface of this pool, strange foam appears. When I say strange, I mean scientists have no clues about its origin. The methane bubbles that form under the foam layer can pop, sometimes bursting into flash fires. And it's not just a fun fire show. In May 2013, one such incident in Iowa killed 1,500 pigs. It was a devastating fire, and the investigation showed that methane was the cause. The manure under the hog farm was not cleaned for a whole year, and, well, it resulted in a tragedy. You know, given all these facts, it seems to me farms are one of the most dangerous places to work. But even people who are not directly connected to farming can experience real nightmares. I'm mostly talking about the smell. Imagine for a second you're an experienced farmer who's been working with animals for many years. One morning, you get to your farm and see, Ew, it stinks, it stinks, take down the farm! We're hungry, bring back the farm! What would you do in this situation? That's a real issue that seems to have no solution. No matter what you do, the result will still be terrible. And the more animals you have, the more feces they produce, and the stronger they smell. Sometimes the smell becomes so strong your eyes burn and nose waters. Oh, and don't forget to add flies to that. Often the animal waste is simply dumped into huge open-air pits that gradually fill up, and when there's too much of it, it's simply sprayed somewhere into the field. And even if you're relatively far away from the source of the smell, things can easily change when the wind blows. You're lucky it carries unbearable smells somewhere away from people, what if it's the other way around? It affects health, quality of life, and the way you live. Imagine what it's like to leave the house and immediately pick up a choking smell like rotting meat. No, I changed my mind. Don't imagine that. But then there's a question. If the smells from the farms are so disgusting and bother literally everyone who happens to be around, can't something be done about it? Better at the legislative level? Turns out, no, it can't. In any case in the U.S., if things are different in some other countries, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to read that. But in Colorado, for example, the law protects farmers and ranchers from complaints their neighbors might have. They can't just say they suffer from noise and smells and constantly stumbling across cows on the road. The law will be on the side of the farmers. There's even a so-called right to farm. And yet I managed to find an example when courts ruled in favor of complaining neighbors. Smithfield Foods, the world's largest pork producer, had to pay $473.5 million to people living near three pig farms. The jury found that the neighbors suffered from smells, flies, and the rumble of trucks. Ew, it stinks here. That's horrible. Here, have $473 million. <sighs> now it doesn't stink anymore. Actually, you can understand people who file lawsuits. If you live in your house for years and then they build a pig farm next to it, it's hard to put up with it. It's a completely different thing when you move to where the locals are already breeding cattle and you start complaining it doesn't smell like lavender around. 
To reduce the number of disgruntled people, a small brochure was produced in 2003 in Ottawa County, Michigan. At first glance, there was nothing unusual about it, but if you scratched and sniffed the paper, you could feel the smell of manure. You know, like the scented inserts you can find in magazines? A sample of the life in the countryside for those planning to move, so they'd be ready for what awaits them when they start living close to nature. Well, into farms. Actually, the fact that the farms produce a strong smell can hardly surprise anyone. I mean, we're talking about animals. But have you ever wondered what this smell is made of? Why it's so nasty? To be honest, I never imagined I'd have to look something like this up, and yet I found the answer. The unpleasant odor is based on sulfur compounds and ammonia. Everything's clear when it comes to sulfur, but I'd like to tell you more about ammonia, because it's important. It's a toxic substance. It irritates the mucous membranes of the eyes and respiratory organs. Ammonia vapor causes pain and burns to the eyes, loss of vision, coughing fits, and itchy skin. High concentration and long exposure to ammonia can damage the lungs, the nervous system, and result in death. This substance is found in the animal waste, which is abundant on farms. But the problems don't end there. I'd even say it's just the beginning. Ammonia emissions from farms present a real environmental disaster, and an unpleasant smell seems like a minor inconvenience in comparison. The gas rises into the air and then returns to the ground as rain, which can kill plants, fish, cause serious damage to the soil, leaching away nutrients from it. In turn, toxic minerals released from the ground continue to poison wildlife from below. Do you realize the scale of the issue? Farmers are just breeding animals, providing us with food, earning their living, at the same time, slowly destroying the environment. Cows are causing acid rain. What's next, a rain of frogs? Oh wait, that happened before. And you know what? Even when farm animals die, they're still dangerous. That's why in the EU, for example, farmers can't bury fallen stock on their territory. Dead animals must be reported in time, carcasses should be stored in a special way, and then disposed of according to certain guidelines. Well, what could possibly happen? You just bury the body and forget about problems with methane, ammonia, and God knows what else? I have one word for you. Groundwater. Improper burial in the wrong place can simply pollute the water. Can you imagine what a corpse can do to water? What if the animal also suffered from some truly terrible condition, like anthrax? The deadliest anthrax outbreak over the past two decades happened in 2018 in France. It left dozens of dead cows, sheep, and horses, and caused losses for farmers. Animals die very quickly in just a few hours, and the infection spreads when bacterial spores enter the body. It can happen by inhalation, ingestion, or through a cut or abrasion in the skin. And yes, anthrax will really easily find a new carrier through the water. People can also become infected with anthrax by coming into contact with sick animals or eating their undercooked meat. The good news is anthrax isn't contagious between individuals. The bad news is that these spores can still be sprayed. The Johns Hopkins Center for Civilian Biodefense even developed a rough scenario of what would happen if someone sprayed anthrax spores into a crowded stadium in a British city. On the third day, about 400 people will go to a doctor with flu symptoms. By the end of the fourth day, they'll be 1,200 infected, 80 of them will die. On the fifth day, they'll already be 2,700 infected and 300 dead. We'll be running out of antibiotics. Then it turns out that every person within 7.5 miles of the stadium downwind is potentially infected. By the seventh day, life in the city will come to a halt as bus and train drivers refuse to drive there. 4,000 infected, 1,600 dead. In total, by the eighth day, life in the city will be completely paralyzed. Schools are closed. The number of available doctors shrinks because they get sick. The area downwind of the stadium becomes known as the dead zone, and people stop dying only when the death toll reaches 4,000. And although this scenario involves spraying spores, it seems to me that anthrax in tap water would be even more dangerous. That's why the disposal of dead animals is strictly regulated, and it seems most often animal corpses are burned. Well, this makes sense. Fire will definitely kill all dangerous bacteria, viruses, fungi, and in general, everything that could harm humans and other animals. Seems like we dug in too deep. Let's get back to cows and methane. 
Considering how much gas the average cow produces daily, let me remind you that's up to 132 gallons, it'd be strange not to figure out how to use it, or at least keep track of the released gas. People came up with a solution. They attach backpacks with tubes on the cows, which take a sample of the air from the mouth and nose of the cow. Backpacks are changed every 24 hours, and the data allows you to control the cow's diet. Well, and also make sure there isn't too much methane in the barn, of course. But this isn't the only thing that comes out of the union of cows and backpacks. Damn, that sounds really weird. Cow methane has been used to make fuel. First, the gas is captured, then separated from impurities, compressed and stored in containers. After that, it can be used to power anything from a refrigerator to a car. An energy source like that could solve two problems at once, excessive methane emissions and the production of environmentally friendly fuel. The trials were completed eight years ago, but I still haven't heard anything about modern cars that run on animal gas. Seems like the project didn't become popular. I think the reason is cost. Smithfield Foods, the largest pork producer I've already mentioned, has already started processing methane, albeit from swine. It's been estimated that between 30 and 60 percent of cattle and pig manure can be used to produce green fuel. But although there are a lot of farms, the volumes of such gas will be much less than natural. Even the most optimistic scenario says green gas produced from manure would only be just over 1 percent of the amount of natural gas from wells. Meanwhile, the cost is 10 to 15 times higher, so it just won't be profitable. And this is actually quite sad, because methane emissions are directly related to global warming. Yes, while cows eat their food and do other cow stuff, the climate on Earth is changing because of that. The most recent reports I could find tell a distressing story. One billion cows, combined with other livestock, are responsible for releasing the methane equivalent of approximately 3.1 gigatons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Every year! If the world's livestock was a separate country, it'd be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases. In short, you get the idea. Things are quite bad. If cow dung is that dangerous, isn't there some way to deal with it? Maybe we'll feed them certain foods that, I don't know, can eliminate or at least reduce the level of emitted methane? Yes, luckily there is a food like that, and it's algae, the common seaweed. Turns out that if you feed it to animals or just add it to their food in small amounts, you can reduce methane emissions by a whole 82%. Steve, you found anything else? See you later.